Pues tenemos el placer esta mañana de contar con la presencia del señor Mark Prensky, uno de los referentes más importantes en el ámbito educativo, la persona que acuñó también uno de los términos más famosos también en educación, como es el de nativos digitales, y está hoy aquí con nosotros en la Universidad Camilo Gesela eh, en el Media Lab para, para concedernos una entrevista. Así que, good morning, Mr. P eh, Prensky, thank you for being here today. Good morning. Buenos días. I am I am thrilled to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to start with uh, this question because you stand for a new kind of education, uh, an education that recombines uh, thinking and accomplishing. I think that's very revolution revolutionary. I think uh, because we used to identify education with the realm of thought and hardly ever with the realm of acting. Well, there are really two traditions of education in the world. The oldest tradition is accomplishing. The oldest tradition is father to son, mother to daughter, uh, master to apprentice, of getting things done in the world. And that tradition is still with us, but it's gone into our businesses and into our workplaces. Along the way, a group of people arose who wanted to think carefully about things. They started forming academies starting with Socrates and other people. And that tradition, the academic thinking tradition, is what has come to dominate our schools. And the unfortunate part about that is that in the old days, we used to think for the past couple of hundred years, we could give kids an academic education, and then when they started whatever work they were going to do, they would have to get another education starting from the bottom. And that just doesn't work in our fast-paced world. Kids have to learn to get things done from the very beginning. So does it mean that you are in favor of the elimination of lectures? I've always been in favor of the elimination of lectures. Mm -hmm. I think that that kind of thing is now so much on YouTube where you can watch it at double speed that if you really need to take in particular information, you can do it very quickly. You don't have to pick your body up and go to a particular place. Uh, so I've always been for interaction as a better way of doing this, but I'm also for not needing to learn a whole lot in advance in order to be able to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. You may need to know a little bit in advance, but mostly you learn on the job while you're doing this. And we have to have better methods to make that happen, which we don't have today. Mm -hmm. In all that methods, technology has a crucial role for you? I think it does. Mm -hmm. I think that we can, but, <coughs> but it's not just the technology, it's how we put our knowledge into the technology. Mm -hmm. So for everything, there ought to be a place where you can go and say, what's the most important thing to know about this? What's the top thing? Okay, now I got that, I want to go deeper, I want to go deeper, I want to go deeper, rather than having each subject be linear from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. So you are still a very big supporter of technology, I think, um, but I'm a little worried because now we are, n we are seeing how technology have impact our students' tendency to, uh, for instance, gratification, for example, or in their lack of persistence, sometimes resilience. Do you also mentioned that, I think, before. So do you still think that the profound changes of the digital age we are experiencing now uh, are mainly an opportunity and not a burden for education? I think it depends on how we look at education. Mm -hmm. If we think of education as the old system of teaching math and language and science and social studies, technology doesn't really help very much. Mm -hmm. We knew how to do that before. We knew how to write before we could write online. We knew how to do research before we could do research online. What has happened is that technology has empowered kids to do very new things that they couldn't do before before they couldn't connect with people around the world, before they couldn't simulate the whole history of human beings, before they couldn't build robots to accomplish certain tasks. So what we haven't figured out how to do is to take the technology, not that we build for education, I don't think that's very valuable, the technology that's in the students' pockets that everybody has access to and use that, learn to use that technology to improve the world and to do projects. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I think that's very beautiful. You you mentioned also um, that uh, the ends of the education need to change, and you mentioned that um, one of the ends would be improving the world, improving humanity. But how can we go from develop, uh, developing um, in our children skills to improve the world when they become adults, and to make them improve the world now? Let me give you a, a very concrete example. In some place, I think in the United States, a teacher wrote a book about how they had taken very young kids, kindergarten, five-year-olds, out into their neighborhood to interview shopkeepers. And they did that, and when they came back, they thought about what they had heard, and they wrote a report that said the shopkeepers would like the children in the neighborhood to be kinder and nicer. And that was the end. And they thought they did something in the real world, but they didn't because the, they just learned what the work is. The work is how do we make kids who are nicer and kinder in the real world? And that's a project that these kids can do because they are the kids. So it's, it's really having a different objective. The idea of learning, which has been our objective, is no longer good because learning is not an end. Learning is a means, mm -hmm. and the means is real-world accomplishment. The means is getting something done. The end, excuse me, is getting something done. The end is becoming a good, effective, world-improving person and improving the world. Yeah, you mentioned uh, uh, the new paradigm of education will need to base on individualized stories of team-based real-world projects. That's really interesting, but how this will work in practice? Well. I'm busy collecting a database of the kinds of projects that kids can do at each level. And there are hundreds and even thousands of these. And from companies and from governments and from NGOs, we can keep getting more and from our own ideas. And the trick is to figure out for each student at each moment what their strengths are, what their passion is, what a good role would be, how to stretch them a little bit to the next level. And that's the role of the teacher to help figure that out and put them into these groups. And once they're in a project that they're passionate about, that's when they come to school on their own. That's when they're happy. That's when they want to get things done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you, you mentioned as well, this, uh, we need a new curriculum based on individual passions. And that's it possible to make you know, um, a general curriculum with individualized um, Focused. Well, it's the idea of, a, of what a curriculum is mm -hmm. that is changing. It used to be a curriculum was a set of things that we taught linearly from beginning to end. The real curriculum of a school in the future are the projects. So, but underlying that are sets of skills. And those sets of skills are the sets of kinds of things that we have developed over the history of man. Grit, persistence, uh, thinking linear thinking in design form different forms of thinking different forms of action having good relationships in many different situations ethics politics all these kinds of things those are skills and those skills should are in a list and that's what forms the underlying supporting curriculum all of those skills are lifelong there are not things that you get in school and then have There's some, there are things that you develop for the rest of your life. School gives you the start on these things. And that's what we really want to have our kids understand. These are the skills you need. Here's your start. Keep on going, develop them, and then apply them to whatever it is that you're passionate about. That's how the mm -hmm. application happens. Good. It seems uh, not so easy to actually, but uh, it, it sounds very interesting. Um, do you think it requires also a special attention to emotional skills? I think that emotional skills are, of course, one. I see, f I see four major skills. I see that there are thinking skills, there are action skills, there are uh, relationship skills, which are part of emotional because your relationship is also with yourself. And I think there are accomplishment skills. And so 
if you only have three out of the four, you're missing something. So of course you need, people have to work with people, they have to be able to get things done, they have to be in the right frame of mind to get things done. All of that stuff is very, very important. No more or less important though than thinking and action and accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Um, how degrees in education uh, should be in order to train educators to work in this new paradigm? I think that more and more people are seeing this. Mm -hmm. And up till now, there hasn't been a new paradigm. There has only been the old way. So you could do the old way a little bit better if you went to a, a particular school. It would be a little bit better than this person for this kid. But it would be the same content. It would be math and language and science and social studies and maybe a few other things. What was happening now is that people, individuals, and some of them are kids and some of them are teachers and some of them are principals, are figuring out that there's another way to do it, that there's a different education. And so they're experimenting, and they're starting to do this. And I think that's terrific, because the only thing that I care about is that we all share the same ends, and those ends are to make their world, the world of the students, a better place. Mm -hmm. After that, every place can experiment and do it in their own way. Uh, okay, and if we look at uh, to the future, um, you are, um, um, for example, it seems that artificial intelligence uh, will definitely replace human roles. Uh, but what kind of skills do you think our children will need to develop to, in order to really adapt to for, for, for the future? The skills of thinking and action and relationships and accomplishment are going to be necessary no matter what happens. I think that the future is not going to be oriented as the past, recent past was in terms of individual jobs that you would prepare for. Mm -hmm. I think what we have to help students do for the future is understand themselves, understand what they are passionate about, what they care about, what the problems in the world are that they care about, and what skills do they have and what strengths do they have to address those problems. And then we have to help them understand how to apply their passion and their skills and their knowledge to those problems. I, I don't talk about passion, I talk about applied passion, because that's the difference between non-school and school. School helps you apply your passion. Mm -hmm. As one kid said about his teacher, she showed me I could take my dreams as seriously as I wanted. Very That's nice. what we want to have happen. Very nice. Just for, for finishing uh, the last question, is there an education system or a school uh, closer to the methodology or philosophy that you, you envision now? People always ask me for examples, and I prefer to give examples of what the students are doing. So it's not that you have to buy a ticket to Finland or buy a ticket to some other place. It's that you have to find those students who are doing these kinds of projects, who are getting their education in this new way. And they're all over the place. They're all over. And there are teachers helping them, and there are places. And there are one or two schools in the world that are doing this more or less full time, but not very many. It's mostly an, a bottom-up movement from the students because they are so empowered, because they have the power with technology to do so much more than they could do in the past. And they're doing it. And very often they're doing it on their own, sometimes outside of school, more and more inside schools. And that's what's building up. So you can save your money and not buy the plane ticket. To Thank you so much. Thank you for being here today at the University Camilo Jose Cela. Thank you, Mr. Bransky. El placer es mío. Thank you.